Hi developers, I'm Hossam Dillai, Microsoft MVP. In this video, we'll learn how to use OAuth 2 implementation with ASP.NET Web API applications. The goal here is to use authentication and authorization in, access, in, in order to access protected web services. Protected web services are those um, web services that have the authorized attribute at the top of their naming methods on the API controller. I start with Visual Studio. I go and create a new ASP.NET application by going to File, New Project. Then from here I select Web, then choose ASP.NET Web Application using the .NET Framework. I call my application Cheap Ideas, hit OK. Then here I have uh, some templates that I can use and here I'll use the Web API project because here I want to add a mobile application that consumes this web API. Then I'll go and change the authentication to use the individual user accounts, which will enable OAuth 2 authentication and authorization within my web API application. Hit OK, then create the project. Once the application is created, we'll go directly and execute it by clicking F5. And here it is our application. This uh, application contains uh, some controllers. Here we do have the values controller, which uh, have access to certain resources. Right here it will uh, return a list of value and, and value two. And we can access this, um, this web service through this uh, route right here. So I copy this and try to use it with, uh, from within right here. Microsoft Edge and here it tells me that I cannot access this web service because authorization has been denied for this request. Why is that? That's because right here this controller have this authorized attribute and that means that every method or every web service in this controller should be accessed in an authorized way so that the user should be authorized in order to access these web services. So let's create an authorized request. And to do that, we need first to create a user. So how can we create a user in our application? If we did have an MVC application, then we will have a link at the top right of the um, web page that uh, says sign in or uh, sign up. Then we fill that form with our login and uh, password and then we create the user uh, session. But here from a web API we do have an account controller and the account controller is the controller that is responsible for creating users, updating users, setting passwords and everything related to managing the users inside your application. It's an API controller which have a method called register. So let's look for that method. And here it is, this one. So the register method will be invoked whenever we, ha we want to create a new user in this application. So what we do? is that we create an entity of type register binding model and this one contains the information about the new user like his email, his password and a confirmation for his uh, typed password. We take those, uh, this model then we call the or we create an application user inside our application and application user is the type of the entity that is stored inside the database related to my users. Then we'll try to use the user manager which is of type application user manager and uh, you, you can look at this as the uh, manager for my uh, database for users so it can uh, create retrieve or delete my users from the database. It's like the context. We call create async and pass the user in order to create a new user in the database. If that succeeded, then we'll return okay. 
otherwise we will return that we have uh, an error when storing the, uh, the user. So let's try to invoke this uh, method in order to create a new user for our application. So let's put a breakpoint right here so that I can make sure that uh, this one is uh, invoked. And I go back and use Postman right here. And uh, Postman is an extension that you can use with uh, Google Chrome or you can install it uh, independently. And we'll use Postman to create HTTP uh, requests. So here we want to invoke the web service for this register method. So it's, it's under the route register and we can access it via a post HTTP request by invoking the current route. So let's first um, run our application, then use this application URI. Let's copy that one and use it with Postman. So within Postman here, the first, uh, uh, the first parameter I specify is the uh, HTTP verb and here I want to have a post one. Then copy that application URL and to go to the register method, I need to go to the API slash account slash register. So let's copy that one and use it. With those, we do need to specify the uh, register binding model, the model that contains the information about the registered or about the new user. And this is um, of type register binding model, which have the three attributes as we saw the email, password, and confirm password. So let's create a JSON object that have those information. I create that JSON object inside the body of my HTTP request. So I'll go and specify that I want to, uh, it's of type uh, row and it's a JSON. So I can come here to the text attribute and specify that it's an application slash JSON. Let's create now our attribute which contains the three information about the email and also the password and third one confirm password. So let's have a valid email, a valid password. Uh, here you see that uh, this password should have um, uh, alphabet and special characters because in the application and the code uh, generated and somehow and somewhere we have inside the uh, startup of we have all the requirements to accept a password or actually it is uh, in the identity config so here it is, to validate a password, the password should have at least uh, six characters and it require non letter or digit that's true and it should have a digit and a lowercase and also an uppercase. So it should have um, a combination of all of those uh, restrictions. And my password here respects those. Now I'm ready to send this request to my register method and here it is now it comes to this register method and right from here I can see the model and I can see the data that I already uh, passed in the request. Let's now put a um, breakpoint and the OK so that we make sure that it's added successfully to the database. Yeah, good. So it returns. 200 OK. So that means that this user is now created and is stored inside the database. So let's uh, verify that and we can see the uh, content of the database by going to uh, view, then uh, go to a SQL Server Object Explorer, which help us to uh, view the uh, data or the entities inside our database. I'll go and refresh right here to see the content or to see my uh, new uh, database. So here I call it it uh, spnet uh, cheap ideas dot web. 
or this one actually let's look at the tables As here we have the tables for ASP.NET uh, users we do have also tables for uh, defining the roles the logins the claims and so on so let's uh, see if that user was added successfully so here we see that we do have a user with email that we have uh, specified and with uh, an ID and here also you have the uh, username for that uh, password and also we do have the uh, password but the password here is not that password that we have typed but it's a password ash so it's been uh, transformed into uh, an ash so that uh, not anyone can see the real uh, password for the user for the id also it is generated so it's um, as we know in entity framework it normally it starts with uh, the first id is one but here it's a long um, id so it's uh, have been generated by um, by uh, ispnet identity great so now we have a user in our system now how can we access our values controller so now we'll start authenticating the user now the user is just created but in order to give him access or to enable him to access the the um, secured resources he need to get an access token and the way to get an access token is by sending a request specified to get the access token let's see how to do that i'll go again to postman create a new request and let's use the same url for our application let's copy this and paste it right here then with OAuth we have a URL like OAuth slash token or token and we can see that this um, this URL in uh, ASP.NET inside the startup.auth where here uh, we do have the OAuth options specified telling me that the token endpoint for path is slash token so let's copy that and use it from this app uh, so this should be a post verb so after that i'll go to buddy and from here i specify the username and uh, password for my user and those should be of type uh, form url encoded so i should specify this one the username and password those are the values that should be specified so let's take the username from the previously created method copy paste it here and take also the same password copy it and use it here and now let's send this post http request and here we expect to get the access token but we are getting um, 400 bad requests saying that this is an unsupported grant type because we didn't even specify a grant type so we need to specify that a parameter inside the headers with the username and password and this is, should be named grant type because we are we want to get a token the value of the grant type should be passed as password let's stand or stand and here it is now we get our access token from the uh, web api uh, server and the access token came with its value but also with a uh, token type saying this is a bearer and expires n this is the number of seconds in which my access token will not be valid after this specified time that time is um, monday 15 may 2017 uh, and we also have the date of issuing this um, token and here the expiration could be changed inside the application 
where we are here and um, in Visual Studio if we go right here and inside the OAuth options we do have a value called access token expire timestamp and here we are saying that our token should expire within 14 days of course we can change this value depending on the usage of our application so be because it's 14 days we say that here the expiration is exactly 14 days after the creation of the token great now this token will need it to authenticate our user to so that he could access the um, non-authorized uh, api so let's copy this one and now let's go and create another http request in order to reach the values controller this one here so i'll go and use that url paste it and also use the application url copy paste it here good so this should be a get request and it should be authenticated for that right here we go up to the headers and within the headers we specify that this is uh, this uses authorization we'll add that attribute and within authorization we put the um, the type of our access token which is type right here bearer because here it's specified as bearer so we paste bearer then we put we add a space after that space we go and paste our um, access token the value of the access token great now we send the request and let's add a breakpoint right here to make sure it's sent and hit send now here it is um, our request has been authenticated through the authorize attribute and now we can access the get or this um, web service great and here we have the value one and value two so this way we can access um, or we can restrict access to certain web services by forcing the user to be authorized on our on our system now this is a simple the simplest uh, mode uh, controller we have accessed but now let's create our own data and our own web services and apply authorization on top of them so let's create a new model for that i'll go to the models controller and let's create our application for adding and managing uh, ideas so let's add a class let's call it idea an idea is a public class that have properties like the id which is of type integer so let's call it id and it have another property of type string this one will be the title of my idea and another property which will give me more details or a description about my idea then another property to tell what um, what is the category of my idea let's call it category then i'll add another property which will tell me to whom this idea belongs to to which user this idea belongs to let's make it of type string and let's tell this one belongs to the user here i can use the application user in my application in my uh, system and the uh, application user is the one that does authentication but uh, i don't want to reference that i want my uh, data to be independent from my database where i store my uh, my users because we think always for separating the actual data and the security or the authorization data for my application so here uh, i'll 
you go and reference the user ID instead of referencing the user. It's of type uh, string because my user ID is uh, a string, not uh, an integer, as we saw the value uh, right here. Great. So now we know to which one belongs this idea. Good. Let's save that. And let's do then a build build solution because now we'll go and add a controller. Once we have done that, we'll go and right click the controllers folder, add a new controller, and right here choose Web API 2 controller with actions using entity framework. The model we want to use is our idea. Then here again we can use the application DB context, but this context is uh, created by default by the uh, SPNet template to manage the users. Here we go and create another context in order again to separate the user's context from our data context. So let's create another uh, context and let's call it ideas context. Hit add and then hit add. that adds the ideas controller in my application, which here have all the accrued operations for getting, putting, post, and delete uh, ideas from my uh, database system. Let's try and um, run this application and test uh, these web services. Let's try at first to get all the ideas from my database. For that, I'll go to Postman, create a new request of type get, then use the URL of my application, the same one, and access the web service that gives me the list of all my ideas, which is inside here, the API slash ideas. Copy, copy and paste it here. And then um, actually let's add a breakpoint to make sure it hit that method, then hit send. And here we get to that method, hit continue. And now it returns 200, okay. Uh, it was uh, executed successfully. And here we do not have any data in our database because we didn't uh, add uh, data yet. So let's try and add some data to the database for that. I'm going to create a new HTTP request by creating a new tab right here and use the same uh, URL because here creating a new uh, idea or posting a new idea requires us to execute this uh, web service. And in order to get to this web service, I need to run a post request to the API slash ideas. Then we need to, uh, st or it should be post, of course, and then inside the body, we pass this idea that will be um, uh, will be recognized inside the uh, uh, the method post idea as a parameter. So let's create that idea. It should be uh, specified as a row of type application slash JSON, and an idea as we have created that model. It should have a title. then should have a description, then a category. Let's call this one idea A and description for idea A and category A, for example. Great, let's uh, send that request. We do have a breakpoint already, send it. Let's make sure uh, the values was passed successfully. Great, hit continue. And now we get 200, uh, 201 created. So this record was added successfully to our database. Let's add a second one. Let's call it idea B. And this is description for idea B and it, uh, it belongs to category B. Let's send again the request. It's here. Great. Now, if I go back and retrieve the ideas from my database. 
it returns those two ideas for me. So now I can access my uh, all the ideas stored inside the database without authentication or without authorization. Now let's add authorization to our web services. To do that, we go to Visual Studio and right from here we can uh, specify that all the web services within this web controller should be accessed within the, with the access token by specifying the authorized attribute or we can also specify the authorized attribute in every or in each uh, method that I want it to be authorized and uh, by specifying authorized attribute inside the um, on top of the controller we say that all the methods or we say that the authorized will be um, uh, applied to all the methods but we can do that individually for each method by specifying authorize we go and specify that for all those methods so let's just copy it and also for the put idea and the post and of course for my delete method so let's test it for that I'll go to postman and create or actually uh, let's try now to execute this method again after adding the authorized attribute hit send and now it tells me that we have 401 unauthorized I cannot I don't have uh, permission to access that web service so let's add authorization for our HTTP request headers for that I go to headers and here specify the authorization header with the value bearer and use the bearer that we have get earlier right here the access token copy it and use it in this uh, HTTP request and call it here now let's send again our request and now it can access this uh, secure method to get all my um, all the ideas inside my system we didn't register the user who have created this idea and you see as a result when we get all the ideas the user ID is null so we don't know which user created or posted that idea so let's try and register the or change the value of the user ID whenever a new idea is added to our system so here we can do that from the client application or we can also do that within the web API to make things uh, simpler so within the web API right here let's go to the post here we'll get the idea with the user ID equal uh, null so we can get that or we can change or that user ID to give it to user ID but how can we retrieve, retrieve that user ID from a web API right here so it's simple we uh, we need to access the entity or the attribute call it user here it's available in, uh, the, in the API controller and within the user we do have property identity which will tell us about the name and the username and the ID of the user here we want to get the user ID so here this entity comes with uh, API controller out of the box and it can recognize the uh, user who is executing this web service because here we do have authorized so it's sure that we do have a certain user and to retrieve that user we can use user.identity to get it so we get that user ID then we pass it to our idea so that in every idea will have um, a reference to the user ID who have created that idea great now let's run this up and 
Now let's try to add another idea and see if it will have the user ID of the current uh, user. I'll go to postman and go where we have the post method and add another method. Let's call it idea C. This is the description for idea C and it belongs to category C. Send the request. Oops, uh, authorization has been denied for this request. Okay, we didn't specify the headers. Okay, um, because now uh, it's with the authorized attribute, so we need here to specify an authentication inside the headers of our HTTP request. So let's specify the bearer and again use that access token. Copy the access token and use it inside the authorization header. Now we send our request and the request reaches here. We have our idea with user ID is null. Then I put a breakpoint right here to make sure that we do retrieve the user ID and we affect it to the idea. So here it is, the user ID of the current user as we see it here which is the same value as the user ID stored inside the uh, ISP.NET users DB. So it's the exact same value uh, right here. Great, now let's continue executing to register the uh, idea with the user ID. Here we can see that a user ID is assigned to uh, the idea that we have uh, created. Let's uh, try to add another idea. Let's say this one is idea D, description for idea D, and this belongs to category uh, D. Send it, continue, continue, and then we get that same user ID assigned for both, um, for both uh, ideas. Now, what if I want to only get my ideas, the ideas that I have created? I don't want to get all the ideas from the database. So to do that, here we can filter or we can create a filter based on the user ID. So the way to do that, I go and select db.ideas.where and for every idea, I look for the idea that have the user ID equal to the user ID or to the authenticated user ID. And that uh, user ID is the same one of type uh, string user ID we, as we retrieved it before through the user dot identity dot get user id should be equal equal of course great now let's execute it and let's see if now we can get uh, we can get um, the ideas posted only by the current user for that i go to postman and go again to the get method and right here now for now we have four ideas and if I set sand, continue, I only get the ideas created by the current user. So the other two ideas will not be returned in this uh, method. Now, what's if I want to uh, have both functionality, getting all the ideas inside the system and getting the ideas specified to a certain user. For that, I'll add a new uh, web service, which will be responsible for getting only the ideas for the current user. So let's call it get ideas for current user. And for the uh, old one, let's just remove this where to return all the ideas. But for this one, we will return only the ideas for the current user. And here to invoke this to uh, web services, they use the same uh, verb and the same URE 
For that, we need to change this one. Let's say that the first one will use, for example, API slash ideas slash for current user. And to enable that, we need to specify a route for this web service. So let's say it should be under API slash ideas, the name of our controller, slash then the API slash ideas uh, slash for current uh, user. Great, and now let's uh, test this out. So let's test it. I'll send this one to get all the ideas in my system. So it returns the four uh, ideas, but if I go and specify that I want to, the ideas for the current user only, then I get the only two, uh, two ideas right here. The other web services inside this uh, controller are web services for putting data and this one enable all the authorized users to change any idea created by some other users and we want we don't want to do that we want that the only users who could access and change their posted idea are the users who have created those ideas for that we'll go and inhibit other users to change the ideas that doesn't belong to them and the way to do that right here is uh, going before changing uh, the idea and after verifying the uh, model we'll go and say if the user id of the current user is the same as the user id specified inside the user idea of the uh, idea or it's if actually it's uh, different then we'll go and uh, in, um, inhibit changing that idea and of course the user id here is that same exact value we get it before user dot identity dot get user id so if uh, those two values are different then we'll go and return and what we'll return right here we'll go and return a status code saying bad request or saying we have a conflict here we do have lots of uh, http variables we'll go and use uh, conflict because this is not your idea so you are not allowed to change it good let's uh, try to verify if that works successfully so let's execute it then we go to postman and right from postman we'll go and uh, try uh, create another http request that uses the post then copy this idea or uses a put actually and copy this one here and to uh, uh, to get to a put we should specify the uh, idea id for that uh, idea in here in the URL. So here in our uh, data, we uh, do have four ideas, actually, oops. We do have four ideas. Let's say I want to change the first uh, idea with ID equal, uh, let's say equal one, for example. And that one doesn't belong to the current user. It have no user. Remember, it, the user ID was equal to null. So let's say one and put and um, then we should specify that idea we want to change. And let's put it inside the header as a row of type application slash JSON. Then let's take some, uh, some uh, idea right here and paste it here as um, as it is the idea uh, number one so let's add the id 
for that idea Be let's say this is number one because um, we should specify that ID because here and the put it it is making a verification between the idea ID and the uh, ID that we uh, we pass in the URL so it should be the same one so here I specify one and also here I specify one good now let's um, let's try to uh, change this but also we need to access because here we uh, we are accessing the idea dot user id so we need to specify the value a value for that uh, user uh, id and the value for that user id let's take the user id this one or actually um, we should leave it empty to say this is not uh, uh, the idea of the current user so let's say sand oh authorization okay um, in the headers we don't forget the auth authentication so authorization we use the bearer the value for the bearer is inside right here copy the access token and use it to authorize our application hit send here we get there one and the idea oops the idea is null uh, we seem to have some problems so let's um, continue Not. oh uh, maybe you do have an error with the ID um actually we forget the semicolon sand and here it is our idea continue and now we get the response the server now tells us that there is a conflict so now the server knows this idea doesn't belong to this user so he don't have the right access to a change that uh, that idea great now we can do the same thing to stop users from deleting idea that doesn't belong to them and to do that we'll go here to the delete idea web service and after verifying the model we'll go and verify if the user id oops go and verify if the user id uh, is not different or is different from um, from the idea dot user id and the user id right here is a local variable of type string which will get us the a user ID of the authenticated user or the current user by calling get user ID if that's not the right user ID or not the right user then we'll return good now the users cannot delete any um, idea that doesn't belong to them so now we have created a secured web API where the users have access only to the items that were created by them and they do they cannot access uh, some other users uh, data and that's thanks to using authentication and authorization through the OAuth 2 protocol with ASP.NET web API so I hope this video was helpful for you and thank you